More now on the reaction to President Trump's press conference with Russia's President Vladimir Putin and to Amna Nawaz. Judy, as we heard, the president's statements this morning prompted tough words from members of his own party. We break down the politics now with Susan Page of USA Today and Stuart Rothenberg of Inside Elections. Welcome to you both. We heard the criticism earlier from the president's own party members there. Uh, the natural next question seems to be, and what are you going to do about it? So, Stu? What are the Republicans going to do about it? Well, this could be the straw that breaks the camel's back, but um, I think it's more likely not the case for Republicans. We saw early in the program Rand Paul not really criticizing the president. I have a press release here from Lamar Alexander saying there is no doubt Russia interfered in our 2016 presidential election, and that's about it. No specific criticism of the president. Um, I'm a, I, I get the sense that Jeff Flake, um, uh, John McCain, um, Mitt Romney issued a statement. Mm -hmm. Very ben strongly Sa worded. Ben statement. Sass. These are the outliers in the Republican Party, uh, and I think you're going to you're going to find Republicans continue to support the president. I guess we'll see. You know, it's remarkable you say McCain and Romney are the outliers in this party. Of course, they are the last two presidential nominees of the Republican Party, but it is no longer their Republican Party. It is now Donald Trump's Republican Party, and it's proved to be very difficult to shake the hold that Trump has had in a, in a party that's been redefined in his own image, now most notably in attitudes toward Russia. I mean, if there's one thing that characterized uh, Republican politics in the past, it's been a pretty hard line on Russia. We certainly did not hear that today. So uh, just to add, that's mm -hmm. a terrific point. <laughs> just to add, uh, I was looking at a Pew Research Center survey, uh, actually a series of surveys from 2015 to 2018, and uh, the uh, attitudes toward uh, Vladimir Putin have changed significantly among Republicans. They're much more approving of him, or less disapproval of Vladimir Putin, and less criticism of Russia as a threat to, to U.S. interests. So it's remarkable how the president's attitudes towards Putin have filtered down in the party and really changed the GOP. But there is a consensus now. Let's look ahead to 2018. We're less than four months away now from the midterms, right? There's consensus among both leaders, Republican and Democrat, on the Hill. Russia interfered in 2016. They continue to do so, uh, looking forward to, to future elections, too. How does that matter moving forward now, hearing what we heard from the president today and the fact that Republican and Democratic leaders agree they're continuing to interfere? I don't think this is a huge voting issue for Americans. Uh, I mean, I think it is a huge challenge for our democracy generally. But if you look at the things on which people are going to vote um, in 2018 in the midterms, uh, just as you say, getting so close, I think it's going to be things like health care and the economy and some of the traditional things that either energize people to get out to vote mm -hmm. or not to do so. I mean, I actually think the Supreme Court is a bigger voting issue in November than Russia meddling. Go forward two years to the 2020 race, uh, where we think President Trump will be seeking re-election, and then I think perhaps it becomes a bigger issue. Well, it may not matter to voters, but, Stu, what about to Republican leadership? Should they be making a bigger deal of the fact that Russia continues to interfere in this way? Well, maybe they should be, but the reality is they're so linked to the president, and they, they want to avoid criticism of the president. Yeah, you're right. They want, they, they're willing to criticize the Russian and Russian interference, but I just don't think they want to get into the weeds on this. Uh, and I think they're looking for at other issues that they hope will be more important in 2018. You know, I do think there's one thing. I don't think we're going to see a big investigation, uh, some new effort on the part of Republican congressional leaders. I do think this is a little bit of a job security for Robert Mueller. I think it makes it a little bit harder for President Trump to try to, in some way, uh, fire the special counsel. And that may be one effect from today's news conference. We heard some strong language from uh, leaders in both parties, uh, older members in both parties, shameful, disgraceful, treasonous. Uh, is there anything different about this moment? You've talked about people being critical of the president before. Is there anything different about this moment that you think might even lead Republicans to try to launch a challenge against President Trump? I think that's hard to do with this party. You know, President Trump's approval rating among Republicans is almost 90 percent. The only time a Republican at this stage in his presidency has had stronger approval within his own party was George W. Bush immediately after the 9-11 attacks. So I think it is, it's not that, I, that it's impossible there'll be a challenge or even a serious challenge, but I think this is Donald Trump's Republican Party for the time being. Well, this was a pretty dramatic event today, pretty dramatic mm -hmm. press conference, a lot of gasps after the fact, and wow, I've never seen anything like this. I keep saying that every week. I say, I've never seen anything like this. But I, I guess I, I, I agree with Susan about the nature of the Republican Party and their commitment to Trump. And 
Um, no, I, I, I don't think it's, it's very clear at this point that there's some sort of revolt within inside the Republican Party coming. It could happen over time. And look, for the midterm elections, the Democrats don't need a full-scale Republican revolt. They just need to win swing voters, turn out Democratic voters, and any leakage from the Republican side is a plus for the Democrats. Talk to me a little bit about some of the dissonance we're seeing just within the administration, though. You have President Trump going out today and basically saying he believes President Putin. And then you have his Homeland Security Secretary over the weekend saying, we know that Russia is interfering. How do you square those two things, Stu? Uh, I think Donald Trump is, um, is a bit of an outlier, and yet he's the President of the United States. I mean, what, you know, what can you say? He's, he has his own views, and he will be criticized indirectly but nobody's taken him on directly. We can't, we can't find very many members of his own party that are as outraged. That's the thing. There's no outrage. Even when Lamar Alexander and John Cornyn from Texas make statements about, uh, about the Russians interfering in the election, there's no outrage. And, and that's a problem. So, yeah, sure, you can look at, at uh, administration officials. But if the president isn't taking decisive action and it doesn't, doesn't express a sense of anger, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think anything gets done. The president cannot be an outlier in his administration. Right. The president defines uh, his administration. But you see this division with some of his top staffers also on the issue of NATO. Mm -hmm. You know, the president came to this news conference, and one of the things that made it so striking was his language and his posture toward Vladimir Putin was so much friendlier than his posture had been toward our NATO, our NATO allies. After the NATO summit, you had administration officials going back to NATO allies saying, we're still in, we're still committed to NATO, uh, but you know this is just the president. Trader. And then he does the news conference today and undermines that message. The damage is done. He does the damage, and everybody tries to clean up. Well, you know the president. What the president says matters more than anybody else. And we'll have to leave it there. Susan Page, Stuart Rothenberg. Thanks for your time. Thank you.